Penguin for Charity Easter Edition 2015. I'm your host, Cal Malizzi, here for you with day two. And with me is TJ ZMQT Sanders. Uh, TJ, I'm still kind of, we just saw on the Twitch stream the uh, the ending of that last series with D2 and Tides. Uh, D2 saying he didn't expect the combo in the Mildred. Really tough way to lose, but yeah, what a final game that was. Yeah, he, he drew the Colette Oracles pretty much right on time. And that turn where he, he drew uh, Colette Oracle into Innervate Colette Oracle is actually a really big swing in momentum. And then, of course, D2 um, didn't expect the combo at all and didn't play around it. He had a chance to maybe buy himself another turn uh, with the True Server Champion, but uh, Tides with that, that mill play. I mean, we were writing him off at the beginning of the game just because his draws for a mill druid deck were actually pretty poor. Um, he didn't get any sort of mill early on, and he was forced to have to use some of his removal in not the best type of situation, but worked out in the end. Uh, next match is going to be Muzzy from Hearthletics. We saw a jab play yesterday and win uh, a teammate of his versus Gara from from Tempo Storm. Gara best shaman. Absolutely, no shaman for Gara though today. Uh, it's going to be Rogue Mage and Druid for Muzzy, and Hunter Warlock and Mage for Gara. He's going to open with the Hunter uh, Gara against the Mage of Muzzy. It'll be interesting to see what versions of uh, what version of Mage Muzzy brings is pretty much going to determine how this matchup goes. Um, but Hunter, of course, very strong. We saw that with Tides in the last game. But uh, Muzzy, you may have heard of very recently, qualified for and won the Pinnacle 4. So uh, kind of forcing his way onto the scene a little bit and getting getting his name out there. Gara, again, one of the most decorated players from 2014, third in the WCA tournament, doing very well in a, a number of tournaments, of course, one of the leading members of Team Temple Storm. Uh, this is going to be a really interesting matchup. Yeah, for sure. And looking at their lineups as well, I really like Muzzy's lineup coming into this. He, his lineup is Rogue, Mage, and Druid. Uh, I talked yesterday, I said, uh, Rogue, Mage, Druid, Warlock. Any the combination of those four, I think currently, is the strongest combination of decks. Um, just judging by what other players are bringing, judging by the current meta, uh, decks like um, Freeze Mage, Oil Rogue, uh, the mid-range Fast Druid, and pretty much any variation of Warlock are all super strong right now. Uh, a lot of players have been putting in Hunter. Um, Hunter has had mild success so far in uh, the King of Charity Easter event. It's had mild success so far in the KPL, but no real player has sort of just dominated with Hunter. We it, The win rate's probably close to 50-50 over the past couple weeks in competitive play. And... Um, uh, I, I just, I'm not sold on the Hunter currently right now. It's strong against Zoo, but everything else just seems like it's got a pretty decent time against it, um, if it draws well, of course. But then again, Face Hunter could take games off anything. Absolutely. Well, let's find out and see what version of these decks these guys are running. It's going to be Muzzy versus Gara. Game number one, Mage versus Hunter. As we get into, we, to get into the gameplay here. Um, yeah, Mage versus Hunter. It all depends on what var variation of Mage this is that Muzzy's bringing. Um, there's co quite a few Mages out there still. There's uh, Temple Mage, Mech Mage. Freeze Mage has been the most popular. Uh, Emperor Thorson has made some combinations in Freeze Mage possible that were never possible in the past. We saw Hype yesterday playing a Malagos Freeze Mage, which is actually really strong. You get Emperor Thorson out, if if it just reduces the cost of your Malagos and a Frostbolt, all of a sudden you have a, a potential combination of Malagos, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, um, which is a pretty ridiculous amount of damage. It's, um, what was that, 16, 17 damage? 17 damage, just from those three cards alone. And if you get a bigger hand with Emperor Thorasan and you're able to reduce the cost of more, minion, more spells along with Malagos, there's potential for 30 damage burst combinations with double Frostbolt, double Ice Lance on the same turn as you play Malagos, which is just absolutely absurd. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see as you see which version of Mage these guys are bringing. It could really, really shape their lineups. It'll be interested to see what version of Warlock Gar is bringing as well. We've definitely seen more favor of the Zoo or the Zoo-ish versions of Warlock this tournament so far. That's definitely what we've seen uh, as opposed to things like Handlock and Demonlock. And it seems like most pros are just favoring that zoo with things like a gang boss coming in and just making all the difference and being able to tune that deck. Like we said, having the ability to have a class where 
there are really two main directions and you can go on a sliding scale in between them and have viable decks pretty much at every point. It's not, I mean, there, there are very few other classes where, like, you can't do half mech mage, half phrase mage. That doesn't work. It doesn't, it's not going to win you many games. But you can do half zoo, half demon lock and have a pretty effective deck. Yeah. Mage is one of the other classes that is versatile, though. Um, like, there's all the way from super fast. Uh, there was that, what was the, I forgot, who, who was that player that made that deck? Was it Tiddler Celestial? Who made the really fast mage deck? Possibly. Um, with, like, arcane missiles and things like that. And uh, one, actually, like, plays really highly the tournament with it. Then you go, like, Mech Mage, then Temple Mage, then Grinder Mage. Um, then that weird Value Mage that was, like, a weird version of the Grinder Mage and then Freeze Mage. So Warlock and Mage are two of the highest uh, variant classes. But I've even seen some Control Mage. I uh, cast a tournament at um, Insomnia Fest on a player called Exploding Cow, who's a UK player. Uh, in the final against Powder, brought a uh, kind of homebrew control mage that managed to take uh, a win off of Powder. So there's so many different things you can do, but the gameplay is on here. It looks like it's going to be Mech Mage for Muzzy versus Face Hunter for Gara. Uh, Pilot Sky Golem for Muzzy is an interesting tech in Mech Mage. Did see the Doctor Boom as well. So it's our first Mech Mage of the weekend so far. Yeah, Mech Mage has sort of struggled lately because it's weak against a lot of the decks that are being played right now. The new Zoo actually has a pretty good matchup against Freeze Mage, uh, or against Mech Mage, I'm sorry. Um, it all depends a lot on early draws, which is usually the case sometimes in aggro or aggressive decks versus aggressive decks. It's also, Mech Mage is also really weak against Freeze Mage, which is one of uh, one of the big downfalls there um, because those little board control tools that they have don't really do much against Freeze Mage. So. I'm actually surprised to see a mech mage in the current environment, but I'm excited to see what Muzzy's going to be able to do with it. It can still get wins, and obviously you do only have to get one win with it. So we'll see. We're going to see the mech warper snow chugger come down here. Snow chugger could be pretty big in this matchup. Be able to lock up the weapons of the hunter. But there are obviously ways to clear that. Could just eagle horn bow into it right now. But uh, it does. It is difficult in this situation. As well. It's a situation that when you're playing on ladder and you play against mech mage, you find yourself in quite often. Is do I want to clear the snow chugger so I can stop my things being frozen, or do I want to clear the mech warper so we can't ramp into anything else? And we can see from the hand of Muzzy that it probably would be more advantageous to take out the snow chugger right now. But he definitely will think about taking. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and take out the mech warper. So you know, there could be double Anoyatron, second snow chugger second mech warper next turn and he doesn't doesn't want any of that yeah talked about it a little bit earlier but uh hunter face hunter rarely plays board control uh in matchups uh, they'll, they'll only really play board control against other fast decks and they'll only play board control for the first couple of turns and just that there's really crucial cards uh like stopping the momentum from zoo or mech mage really hurts uh, really hurts them. So you, what you do as a face hunter in these matchups is you stop the, the initial momentum, and then you start going on the offensive and force the the, the other player, the mech mage, to to play defensively for the for themselves. So um, smart play, but he is going to be locked out from that second charge of bow for quite some time. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Does have the explosive trap to deal with it, and that's probably what he's going to use. To it means he doesn't. He's not going to get his face attacked by the snow chugger again. Thanks to the explosive trap. I mean, that in hand, not great, but... Uh, you could just get Frostbolt, though, but Pilot Shredder yeah. most likely going to come down here. Um, yeah, Pilot Shredder going to come out. What do you think about the Pilot Shredder coming down before procking the trap? Um, he wants to try and bait him to attack with the bow before he gives him an extra charge. You always want to hesitate to give an extra charge on the Eagle Horn bow, because that just gives... Especially if you're giving up your Snow Chugger. Um, you want something on the board to be able to match with the... The whatever creature comes out next and be able to still attack with that powder cheddar on the same turn so um i'm not surprised that he decides to, to go for it uh he, there's also a possibility that he might just want to set up a ridiculous amount of damage before he even gives him a second attack of the bow so what he can do is he can play dr boom next turn then the following turn after that he's got lethal with what the boom bots on the board the 10 damage from pilot cheddar and uh the pilot of sky golem and fireball frostbolt which might end up being the best play there's actually 20 even if he were to proc the trap here there's actually 20 damage with the, the 10 damage on the board plus 10 damage in hand for exactly seven mana so 
Muzzy's getting pretty close here to lethal actually, even with the explosive trap. Yeah, yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if he maybe procs it next turn, um, but frost bolts him as well. Um, but I mean, it just seems like unless he get, is threatened a lot on this turn, he might just play Doctor Boom. Yeah, and that uh, the Leo coming down is super unfortunate. He's gonna kill Command Face and try and push the damage. Yeah, yeah Leah coming down is, ends up being super unfortunate. That's pretty funny. Leoc is a... All three animal companions are actually really strong. People always say it's unfortunate when it's not Huffer. But then they always say it's <laughs> really fortunate when they do get Huffer just because of uh, the, the four immediate damage that it can do. But if you look at the cards by themselves, they're still strong. Just that's not what he's going for right now. Yeah, I mean, on an empty board, you definitely don't want Leoc in that situation. He wanted either the Huffer or the Misha, but the, uh, the Leoc isn't really going to help him. It is going to help him if he's able to juggle Unleash next turn. That is going to give him quite a bit of power with the Leoc. Mm -hmm. So that's not to be not to be sniffed at with only 10 health left for the Mage. But this is, yeah, this is a difficult turn for Muzzy. Like you say, he could just kind of hope there's not enough damage and go for the Dr. Boom, or he can start clearing. Uh, is he just gonna push down? I think he's just gonna push damage here. He might clear the Leoc. Okay, yeah, he's gonna use the the snow chugger and the, the fire blast. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Face to reduce the uh, power yeah. of weapons. Um, there's not many card combinations that can kill him this next turn. Uh, the only thing I can think of would be uh, animal companion into Huffer kill command uh, would be one. Uh, knife juggler unleash if. He still can't kill him. Even if Bolt Juggles hit face and yeah. Bolt hit face, he'll still be two damage off after hero power. Exactly. So that's uh, that's going to be game number one. Going over to Muzzy, Mech Mage, which you said is not exactly, not particularly strong at this point, is able to take a win against the face hunter. It's actually that pilot Sky Golem as the, the card, which is less common in Mech Mage. That's probably one of the reasons why he's able to take this here. Just a huge amount of power to put on the board, even without things like Doctor Boom that uh, has really got the damage in against Gara. Yeah, Mechmate just has a strong matchup against Face Hunter regardless. Uh, cards like Anoyotron and Snow Chugger, if you get Anoyotron or Snow Chugger out on turn one or two, you pretty much win the game just from that point. It's just so hard. When a, a Face Hunter has to play that defensively the for so long, they can only really afford to play defensively for two, maybe three turns. If they're having to play defensively, play defensively for any longer than that, most likely they've already lost the game. And Mechmage is one of those classes that can really just lock you out of doing much. You play an Anoratron and you Frostbolt face, all of a sudden Face Hunter doesn't have a turn. And uh, that's pretty much exactly what's happened here. And um, he's going to have to Knife Juggle or Unleash just to clear. And so that may not be game. Depending on what comes out of this piloted Shredder, it has to be one attack. If it's one attack, he survives for one more turn. Uh, but he doesn't get it off. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Or does it's he? Okay. Ruby neck. okay. Okay. So he is alive. We we spoke too soon. And actually, <laughs> I think Gara might have just won, because a Nerubian egg coming out of that pile of treader was actually uh, pretty bad. Sapcasters. Um, Sapcasters. I I think. It was very unlikely because he had to get perfect juggles there. Um, well, not necessarily perfect juggles, but he had to um, not have two of the juggles go to face, <laughs> and he had to have something that had less than one attack or less than two attack, either one attack or zero attack, come from the powder cheddar. Any other way, and he would have lost. So now he's forced to, uh, he's going to have to fireball the. Knife juggler, yeah. The knife juggler. That's the only way. He can't risk it because one creature off the top, all of a sudden you're looking at, oh, this is... Uh, at the same time, you also have to make the play to win. You can't make the play to not lose. Um, there's uh, seven damage. He would have to have some type of direct damage in his hand, which is very likely. But again, again you have to sort of make the play to win and not make the play to not lose. And if there is no direct damage drawn from, drawn from the hand here... Here we go. Abusive oh, Sergeant. Wow. That is enough. Yeah. So Gara's gonna pull this out. Sap the casters. 
rank 25 casters, fire casters, face hunter wins. Yeah. I can't believe we ever died with face hunter. He did get pretty pretty good juggles. Those were pretty solid juggles. And there's not many things that can come out of Pilot of Cheddar that would have won him the game there. Novice Engineer, um, Captain's Parrot, um, the Ruby and Egg. There's just not many things that are gonna that are going to stop him from being able to to finish off the game or being yeah. able to stop uh, Muzzy from finishing off the game. So, pretty fortunate stuff. Uh, it's really great of him to see that play at the at the very end there. Um, and congratulations. I mean, <laughs> that's a, a solid win for for Gar for, for for game one. Absolutely. So that hunter is locked out, and Gar is going to move on to his warlock. Um, just wait to get confirmation of what Muzzy's gonna gonna go for. He's gonna stay on the mage. He may opt to switch it up, but he may also just try and get a win with this mech mage. Obviously, he's queued into it first. He thinks this is the deck he wants to play first, so uh, that may just be what he sticks with. I think mech mage. Yeah, he's gonna stick with the mech mage here. So he's gonna look to get a win with this against Warlock. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Gara is also bringing Zoo. I think that's pretty likely. Um, he can be quite an aggressive player. Uh, we see from the face hunter, though he is also known for control as well. He's a very versatile player, but I think the zoo will probably be his choice here. You see a little smile from Gara there, uh, as we can see the player is getting ready. He feels pretty confident after that first win, which was a very close matchup, and it's one of those matchups that really kind of tests you, I think, as a player, being able to see your outs and play your outs. And Muzzy played very well there, particularly at the end, you know, playing the Sylvanas because he knew it was his only real chance to win. Uh, rather than fireballing the knife juggler and not keep, not keeping hold of that fireball to deliver the lethal, but we're gonna get into this game in uh, just a second here and see what these guys are playing. Yeah, well, it's if this is a zoo, then this matchup is actually really interesting, uh, just because um, Mechmage can have a hard time. Mechmage can struggle against the new zoo because some of their cards just aren't as good. Uh, Goblin Blast Mage can sometimes work against you if you're playing against Zoo. If you get multiple shots onto an Imp Gang boss, you're, you're basically putting more power on the board at the same time as trying to clear it. So uh, a lot of it depends, again, uh, in aggro versus aggro, a lot of it depends on the early draws. Having a one, having a, a, a good curve, especially in these aggro matchups that are also more mid-rangey, I suppose, is a, is a good way to put it. Um, aggro decks that ramp up pretty quickly and focus on having a good curve. It's all about whether or not you can uh, get control of the board early on. All right, so uh, Zoo versus Mech Mage. This is pretty interesting. It's uh, a, a game that I've played out quite a bit on ladder recently. I've been playing the same gang boss Zoo, and it, it can be a good matchup for the Zoo if you can establish early board control, but the Mech Mage just has so many bigger threats than the Zoo often that if the, zoo, if the Mech Mage curves really well, you can be in a lot of trouble. And things like Spider Tank in this matchup can be pretty pretty horrible to deal with. Yeah, well, it depends on what kind of zoo it is. Uh, a lot of players that are playing zoo in competitive play aren't going with the super traditional zoo where they run, uh, where they top out at, like, Doom Guard. Uh, a lot of times we'll see cards like Sea Giant and cards like uh, Dr. Boom uh, to sort of slow down uh, the zoo decks. And, I mean, how it's really tough for... A mech mage to deal with an early sea giant unlike like the zoolock for zoolock mirror match where uh your opponent can just like power overwhelming one of their creatures and abusive sergeant mech mages don't necessarily have good removal unless they're using some of their burn like their fireball where they're gonna have to trade two for one in that situation and throw away some of their burn just to be able to trade it off sometimes i can put them in a rough situation Absolutely. This looks like a fairly similar version of Zoo to what we saw from Tides earlier. We see the Void Callers, we saw the Sea Giant and the Mulligan. So uh, wouldn't be surprised if this is the same deck list. So we didn't see any any real kind of demon tech other than the Void Callers in the in that deck. Just the Sea Giant right at the top. Um, he wants to void, he wants to try and snipe this Spider Tank off. I would Void Void Caller and Gang Boss seems like the good play yeah. here. Even if he gets two juggles onto the mech warper, that's pretty much okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine, yeah. Anything but face is, is what he's going for with this juggle. Yep, there you go. So he can he has his choice here. He can kill the mech warper or the spider tank. 
Um, I think he'll probably opt to kill the Mech Warper, just to stop any tech coming down. Again, we do see him opting for that at a time when Muzzy has basically no mechs in hand. Garth's Second game juggles. in a row. Garth's juggles have been on point. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely on point so far. Turn, for, turn 5 low Lothab is uh, always good. Drop that. It's not going to do too much with the spells, but it is going to be an, a nice big body for the, the board as a threat. Do see Defender of Argus in the hand, and... Uh, I mean, if the, if the juggle were to hit the Lothab here, I think we might see a trade with the knife juggler. So let's see if Gar's jugglers can continue to be on point. Oh no, missed one. That's not too big of a deal. Yeah, it's not too bad at all because you get to, you do get to keep the two creatures alive, put your opponent to nineteen. And the mage is forced to trade anyway, and you putting the mage on the back foot is probably a good thing here, just because uh, you're the aggressor, you're the one that has board control, so. Even if it, even if the knife juggler had hit the Lothab, I'm not sure if he if he would have traded because that four face damage is hard to pass up at this stage. Yeah, I mean, and this is this isn't a great turn for Muzzy at all. It's he it doesn't really have a lot to play. He's gonna get that snow chugger out. He's just kind of biding his time a little bit until next turn because he has that Doctor Boom. Doctor Boom could end up being big, large impact, but this is basically not giving a free turn over to Gara, but giving a turn where he has so much wiggle room. I think we'll see another in-gang boss probably coming down here. I actually Maybe like the, the board color to try and pull out a free in-gang boss. It fits the curve better as well. That's true. Is he going to tap here or probably not? I think if he's going to tap, he does that at the start of the turn to, to draw first. So he's probably not going to tap here he's being a little bit conservative with his life total trying to preserve his advantage in the I life game i think it depended on the first juggle uh whether or not he was gonna play the egg or not because i think he was hoping that the juggle would hit the mad scientist so he could actually give the egg over so i think actually tapping second and playing the seeing the juggle first was actually more important than seeing the tap uh because nurbin egg is just about the best card that you can give to a mech mage with mere entity yeah, because they don't have any activators. They can frost bolt it, or they can ping it over a couple turns. But that's about the only thing that they're gonna have to do that. So, <clears throat> absolutely, get you know you can invest four mana in your in, in getting a four four or a frost bolt, which is really valuable. Hmm. Mortal Coil is a decent pickup here. It could help him hmm. off these one ones, but he Mortal doesn't. Mortal Coil and Zoo. <laughs> it's been a while it's... since I've seen that. Yeah, it, that is, we didn't see that in Tide's deck. I'm not sure if it... It's an interesting tech. Yeah, he's going to give him the Nurubi and Egg with the Mirror Entity, like you said. Hope that it's it. Actually, Hope that the let's see bot. how his Balm RNG is. Is it... Oh, no, it hits the Void Collar. That's not good. Well, goes for Implosion. Oh, rolls one lower than he needed to. He needed to roll high on that. Uh, that's still not the worst thing in the world. Because it's going to make his trade with it a little bit a little bit easier, uh, but he is going to summon the Imp King boss, so <clears throat> pretty good there. Whatever it's whatever the Doctor Boom trades into is going to be bad. Oh, Adger Drake off the top, which is actually pretty big. Allows him to get deeper into his deck. It, it's a big body on the board that also draws him a card. If he draws a Frostbolt here to deal with the Imp Gang boss, that would be pretty huge. I don't even oh, know. If, I don't even know if he would use the Frostbolt on the Imp Gang boss if he. Because either way, you're putting the same amount of power on the board. I guess you, the seven face damage from Doctor Boom is pretty important, but yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> this bomb is risky <laughs> because if it hits the M Gang boss for oh, okay, <laughs> okay, that's not bad. Yeah, two pretty bad targets for the bomb there. Uh, that's pretty risky. He's gonna be able to kill off these imps, and yeah, I think he's just gonna go face here. Don't mind this at all. Your opponent has only one card in hand. You really need to press your advantage and start building up with the board that you've built up and get some damage in. Void Caller's not great. He's going to tap for another. Devern of Argus is a lot better. <laughs> so now the egg trades with the Doctor Boom. Pretty nice. He can actually even use... If he wants to, he can trade the Imp Gang boss with the Azure Drake to protect his Nerubian. Oh, okay. He's not going to do that. He's actually not even going to use the Argus, I don't think. But if he'd used the Argus and the Direwolf, he could have traded with the Azure Drake. 
No, <clears throat> he is going to use the Argus, but this is the best way to use the Argus if he's going to. <clears throat> Just because it makes it so that uh, there's a big body for uh, Nerubian. Because <laughs> All right. if you use Snow the Chugger, Goblin Blast Mage. If you use the Defender of Argus on just the egg, he'd basically essentially he'd essentially be wasting the the taunt and the buff from Defender of Argus. Oh, he manages to avoid the gang ball oh, completely. Those are really solid juggles because not only can he ping off one of these creatures, but again, like you said, he also avoided hitting the imp gang boss and can trade into the taunted up Nerubian. Wow, that that's was a, pretty perfect. Yeah, that's about the, probably the best struggles you could have caught in that situation. Uh, other, the only one being better would be hitting the dire wolf instead. Oh, that's super unfortunate to draw the doom guard here, where it's really mana efficient to play it with the void color, even though you'd probably want to use the void color to pull it out. But that's not too bad. I mean, it's, it's virtually the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you're still getting the Doom Guard on a turn where you're not discarding cards. He's still using all of his mana on this turn. Um, th he might even tap. I don't think you can risk that. Yeah. Yeah. I would actually like to see the Doom Guard played here. Yeah, I think you'd, I, I'd like to see Doom Guard possibly even just all go face. Mm, I think you but... need to focus on clearing the board. Um, if he uses the Doom Guard to clear the Goblin Blast Mage, his board is actually really strong. Uh, but yeah. No, I like this. I like face. Maybe that maybe that says something about me. But uh, I like going face in that situation. Mech Warper, pretty much a dead draw. And yeah, Muzzy going to go ahead and concede. Just doesn't have what he needs. And that's going to be game number two. Going over to Gara with his Zeus. So Gara 2-0 up here just has to get one win with his mage. And this is pretty rough for Muzzy right now. Three chances too. Uh, it depends what mage this is. I can't imagine Gar would bring three fast decks. Um, that seem, it seems a little bit weird if he would do that. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and make a guess that it's Freeze Mage. Uh, but maybe bringing three fast decks in Conquest could be okay because you'd basically be preying on slower decks. Uh, because if you look at his decks, uh, if he, uh, I don't know. I think, think there's mage. a possibility it might be Tempo Mage. That's a possibility. Um, yeah. I, th I think, there, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think there is there's a definite drawback to bringing three decks of the same kind because it makes you really, really weak to things which counter aggro decks. So say your opponent brought the Chinese anti-aggro priest, you would lose because you couldn't beat, any, you couldn't beat up with any of your three decks pretty much. Yeah. It's going to be the Mage Mirror match. Muzzy's going to have a third goal with this Mech Mage. Um, and we talked about that yesterday, about the psychology of playing a deck and losing with it twice and sticking with it for game number three can be difficult um we saw that with number guy in the first game he uh pretty clearly tilted with the the face hunter lost some some really favored matchups and that really kind of got to him a little bit we'll see if muzzy he looks like a pretty calm and calculated guy but gara gara looks pretty happy right now with his position and, and why wouldn't he be he's got three chances to get one win and a player of his caliber should really be able to win one out of three matches yeah uh 3-0 would pr be pretty impressive for him coming to this it would be making a statement gara it's it's been a while since he's had like a really big performance in, in a tournament so um it is it looks like it's gonna be freeze mage but we'll we'll have to see in a second that freeze mage would be my guess um yeah when you see the alex Straza. yeah uh freeze mage yeah okay now nah, okay it was just it took a second for me to be able to see what was on the screen um Freeze Mage is actually really good against Mech Mage just because Mech Mage doesn't do a lot of damage from their hand uh, except for their burn spells later on and pretty much all of their stuff is stopped by Freeze. Like the Freeze is just so effective on them. It takes a little it takes a while for their big damage to ramp up. They're not going to do absurd amounts of damage early on like Face Hunter or Zoo. Um, since a lot of their creatures are focused more on ramping up quickly and uh, focusing on board control, like Gobble Blast Mage, Snow Chugger, Mech Warper only have two attack. Um, Freeze Mage does have a little bit more time than against other aggro decks to draw into those freezes, draw into the Doomsayers, draw into some of their burn. Uh, but again, like any aggro deck, like any fast deck, there is chances that you just blow out the game against Mech Mage or against Freeze Mage. Yep. So we're gonna see the Snow Chugger come down here. Next turn, potential second Snow Chugger and the Noyatron for Muzzy. Doesn't get the early Mech Warper, which you might have been hoping for, but... Does have cho choices to draw cards here, but he 
Ops just to clear the cog hammer, cog master rather. We were talking about cog hammer earlier. Yeah, we were. I'm oh, not like that. Don't <laughs> say it like that. That's bad. We we were merely remarking that it's a very hard card, hard card name to say as a caster. Yeah. Because you have to be very, very careful how it sounds. Very hard card name. Really hard card name. That's when I uh, when I when I've been casting before, generally I'll say cog hammer. Cog hammer. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure. Make sure that people don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, Millhouse Mana Storm. <laughs> Off the shredder. Golden Millhouse Mana Storm. Yeah. One of the most underwhelming golden cards, in my opinion. It's a little bit lackluster. He just has some special effects on his hands. 3 out of 10. 5 out of 10 with Rice. <laughs> Only well, the get it. Um... And Neutron's going to protect the Millhouse Mana Storm, though not really in this matchup. But that's uh, that's a pretty good pickup from Monzi. He's able to get some some good damage in early on with the second Snow Chugger as well. <laughs> it's so funny that you're basically replacing your body with a bigger body. Yeah. It's just crazy stuff. Well, he draws into some freeze here, so he's going to be able to buy himself some time. Um, but, I mean, he's going to need a lot of time before he's able to start uh, doing damage of his own. And uh, Pilot of Sky Golem is actually a pretty fantastic card because if you can play it on curve in this matchup, you're almost guaranteed to be able to do a lot of quite some damage. Even if it gets popped by the Doomsayer, what comes out of it, it's probably going to be about four attack on average. Um, so their, their boards are usually really sticky and, and hard to deal with. Yeah, Pilot of Sky Golem, we, we did say it was a very strong card from Muzzy in the first game as well. And... Uh... Well, it turned there. out not to be. The low no. health roll on the Potted Sky Golem actually worked against him in that first game. Because of, yes. the, of the, the super legit juggles that Gar got in that first game to close it out. And yeah, not saying he's hacking the game or anything to get those favorable juggles. We'd never say such things about Gara, but... Yeah, Gara Best Shaman would never do that. Gara I'm really Best sad Parker. that he didn't make his full name Gara Best Shaman. Like one word. It is a, it is on a, on Twitch I think still. Yeah yeah that that's why that's what it's in reference to is his is his Twitch name. Um, remember watching his stream back when he first started streaming first started being popular. I was like, why isn't this guy playing Shaman if his name is Gar <laughs> Best Shaman? He's playing like Face Hunter. Or back then he was playing whatever that General Hunter it wasn't even Face Hunter back then. The uh, just the Charge Hunter. No, it was just those days. It, it was just Hunter. Like every Hunter was the same back then. I don't even know. Yeah, I guess Charge Hunter was what you'd call it. I remember the days of Charge Hunter. Yeah. Those were good times. Oh man, he's got so much burn in his hand right now. Yep. Um, he can probably just start just piling on the damage. It's he's in Muzzy's in a good spot right now. This is one of the ways that Mech Mage can actually win, is if they uh, get a lot of uh, burn spells in their hand early on. Because the way you beat Freeze Mage is to just pressure them uh, before they can draw into their Freeze, before they can draw into their uh, their Alcatraz and the Burn for themselves. Because every turn that a Mage has to play defensively, a uh, Freeze Mage has to play defensively, that's one turn that they're not using Alcatraz. Because one of their only win conditions is playing Alcatraz on a turn where they know they're safe and being able to burn on the next turn. So if you pop the block early or threaten to pop the block early, they're never be able to gonna get those turns where they can set up a next turn lethal for themselves. So, exactly. You just see double fireball for Gara now as well. Hmm. Do you think is, is there any merit in the Antonidas here for maybe freezing the pilot Sky Golem? Yeah, there is, but I think playing the Arcane Intellect here would be the would be best. Um, just because he still needs to he wants to. This is one of the safest turns he'll ever be able to play it. I guess Arc, uh, Archmage uh, Ice Lance would be good because he could just start clearing board and um, Mages, it, it'd basically be like a 7 health heal, <laughs> essentially, at the worst. Yeah. Because if it lives, you get Chain Fireballs next turn, and if it doesn't live, that's 7 damage that would have otherwise been going to face, most likely a Fireball or a Frostbolt. So, he's really going to think about it here, but I think Arcane Elect is the best. You need, you need to draw away you can. Whoa, Antique Healbot. Not bad, not bad. Huh. One cur perfect mana as well. Yeah, that's an interesting card for Freeze Mage, though. 
Is that just gonna go for the Doomsayer he needs? Gonna, yeah, he's gonna Ice Lance in the end as well. On the, the Golem, I expect. I don't mind this play. Yeah, definitely should give you a free turn. Uh, but he... Yeah, Muzzy's... Oh, he's thinking about fireballing the Doomsayer here. Muzzy looks kind of pissed. <laughs> I think it might be frozen, I'm not sure. Oh. <laughs> Maybe that's uh, why. Does that's, look frozen. That's a really unfortunate face to be frozen on. Yeah. It looks like he's he, just mean mugging right now. He hasn't blinked in a while, so... Uh, no, it's just a staring contest. Garo's probably really intimidated right now. The only time I've ever seen any players do that, I don't know if you remember the uh, the European qualifiers for the World Championships last year when Green Sheep was playing the Fishu in the final round on the stage. Every time Green Sheep finished a play, he would just look up from the computer and stare at the Fishu for his That's entire really, turn. That's really intimidating, especially for yeah, some yeah. Hearthstone players who um, like are used to just they're not used to land environments. They're used to playing from the comfort of their own home where they can just stare at their computer screen. They can squelch their opponent. You can't squelch an opponent's real life face. Well, you, you, you can, but. I think you'd be kicked out of the tournament it's for it. It's frowned upon. We'll just, we'll just put it that way. <laughs> um, so the Archmage does come out now. Three fireballs in the hand for Gara, but actually, an Archmage Antonidas of his own for Muzzy and the, the Cloak Field. Cloak Field! Oh no! This is a disaster. He oh. he can't do that and kill his opponent's Antonidas, but I don't think he really cares. At this stage, he can pop the block the next turn, and all he has to do is not die in two turns, because this is where he did what he's going to do. He's forces, he forces his opponent to play defensive. And... Yeah, so we're going to see the cold field. Yeah. Go face. Block is... Uh, block has to be played, first of all. And then it's got to be popped as well. So... Hmm. This is not a great turn for Gara. Gara's in a lot of trouble. Potentially, yeah. It's... I just say the ice block does have to come down. I don't think there's any way you can not... Well, there's no the way, because there's, there's at least two fireballs. What do you think of the ice barrier as well? Makes it a little bit harder to pop the block. Ice block. anti heal is not really an option either, because it's essentially negated. He might have to ice block and then... I Yeah, maybe ice block, ice barrier, fireball. Fireball on the... Oh. Oh dear. He's gonna go for the mad scientist. Okay. So he's gonna yeah. fire fireball his own scientist, okay. Okay, this is this is basically guaranteeing that he can use the second block. Uh, so next turn he can ice block again and try and burn him down with fireballs, but it's really risky. So block is gonna be popped this turn. He does have second block next turn. Muzzy's got a, um, wow. See, this is so good because he can, not only can he pop the block, but he can also kill his opponent's Archmage Antonidas. Yep. Pretty solid. Yeah, Fireball Ping on the Antonidas will kill it off. So, and that does give him a Fireball in hand as well. So, the second block's, oh. I mean, why not Fireball? <laughs> like, I mean, I you put an guess. Extra fireball in, in, Fireball and ping virtually do the same thing in that situation. There's like no difference. Yeah, yes. that's, um, <laughs> if it's yeah, that's so odd. Then that's completely the same. <laughs> Either you use the extra mana and just replace it with a fireball. Yeah, I mean this block's gonna get popped no matter what. Um, Whoa, he's gonna win! Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> he leans back and pulls his That's it. Gar is one. Yeah. The second block goes up, fireball face, double fireball next turn, and uh, that's going to be 3 0 for Gara. Very, oh, very. Both them off the top! Oh, what? No. Oh my god, no! That Gara is. Was so relaxed. That is heartbreaking. Look at his that's face it, now. Right? Oh my god. And now he's going to fireball his own face. Wow. Well, fire... Once again, fireball and ping are pretty much the same in this situation. Premature... Which one are you going to kill yourself with? Premature celebration. There's there's no negative creature that can come out from a pilot at Sky Golem. Oh. Like, the, if, if you kill it on your turn, there's no negative creature. Like, there's not a creature that's going to 
impact the turn in any way. Four drops are a lot different than two drops in that regard. And Gar, wow, that is that's heartbreaking. I like to see him pop the golem just to see what's going to come out. Yeah, but it's going to ping his own face. Honorable Sudoku here, and Gara, premature celebration thinks he's going to win. Uh, it was very well set up for him. That was about the only oh, yeah. he could have won. Um, I actually didn't even think to, to count the damage from the fireballs in his hand. Um, I thought he would need... Yeah, that's about the only way that he could have won in that situation, but the Lothab comes at the perfect time, and Muzzy barely barely stays alive in the series oh my god that was crazy we thought he was we thought muzzy was gonna win and then then we thought gara was gonna win and then the lotheb ripped off the top just the <laughs> we talk about and when you're putting freeze mages happening all the time oh it's another deal with it uh we talk about the importance of lotheb in this matchup all the time and being able to play it at the key moment and uh i don't think there's ever gonna be a better example of playing the lotheb at the key moment than ripping it off the top at the turn where you were oh, going to die. Man. Oh, <laughs> so Muzzy's going to go into Druid. Uh, it's it's tough. All these matchups are hard against Freeze Mage. Really, just always playing against Freeze Mage is difficult because, like like we said yesterday, your opponent's playing Solitaire. You're not really playing against them. Uh, you're playing your own game against their life total, and they're playing their own game to burst you down. Yeah, it's very true. That's so funny, though. Gara lean back in his chair and threw his hands in the air and he's like I'm the second coming of Hearthstone Jesus I've won this game 3-0 to zero, but he was denied <laughs> as you can see Muzzy uh, emotionless he's not, uh, not yeah. playing I mean there is a possibility that Muzzy can win with all three of these decks against Freeze Mage uh, Druid is one of the stronger decks against Freeze Mage one of the three classes that can reliably get armor, and one of those classes being mage is usually it's not as reliable. It's one dude is one of the two classes with hero power gains some armor. Uh, they also usually run quite a bit of heal. Um, Lothab is a staple in the deck, so is if they can build up armor early on in the game, have Lothab and uh, Ancient of Lore to follow up after Alex Charles' turn, and are able to pop the block relatively early on in the game with a Force of Nature Savage Roar combo. Those are the three keys for Druids <laughs> to be able to pull out victories. Well, you want to talk about useless tech cards? Let's talk about Mind Control tech in this Druid. Yeah, that is... probably expecting things other than Freeze Mage. Yeah, well, Druid the Flame, though, is a much better 3-drop, and this is seen playing a couple of Druid decks. I know Orange was playing it. At Seat Story Cup. He said it was terrible. He put in his in his Reddit post of his How I Won Seat Story Cup. He said, Druid of the Flame was a bad idea. He said, <laughs> I don't recommend playing Druid of the Flame. I don't know why I put it in my deck. But most of the time, it was a dead draw. He said there was a yeah. lot of three drops that I would have liked to rather have other than Druid of the Flame in that deck. It's difficult. I mean, I, I've spoken to some players about it, and some players seem to really like it. Especially if we can draw early, it can be like kind of a super zombie chow. Uh, yeah. because it just gets that, that great value against aggro decks. But yeah, and I guess in a situation like this where you need to pile on damage as well, you can you can maybe put it as a 5-2 and uh, really push the damage with it. The staring contest has finally ended. Wow. Muzzy is now bad. He's alive. Yeah, the whole time he was just like really pissed off at those Easter eggs. He's like, what is this? What is this Easter egg blue? He said, what I are these Easter eggs here? Easter egg. it's, not, it's not even really Easter anymore. Easter was two weeks ago. Twitch chat. No, it's 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 the Easter event because Easter is supposed to be a charitable holiday, and this because it's a season. Yeah, this is of course Kingwin for charity, so we're going along with the Easter theme, and uh, always always good things happening on Easter. Like so this eating... of the flame here, this is going to trade pretty well with these mad scientists. This is one of the situations where it is pretty good. You can actually clear both of them right now, and uh, you know pulling that block quite early could be pretty useful. I mean, he's going to have to play the second one from his hand. Emperor Thorazan coming out from coming out on turn six is going to be a pretty big deal, though. I'm curious to see if, if Gar is actually running the Malagos in this deck. Um, because Hyped, who is his teammate from yesterday, was running the Malagos Freeze Mage. And it had a lot of similar cards. We actually didn't see the anti heal bot. I'm not sure how much I like anti heal bot in this deck. It, it seems redundant because you're already playing Ice Barrier. Ice Barrier, Ice Barrier isn't as reliable of a heal, but it only costs three mana for essentially an eight health heal as opposed to 
uh, five mana for an eight health heal, and you really don't care about the body as a freeze mage. So um, there's a lot of cards that are sort of staples that you need to have that you can't really cut from freeze mage. I'm not sure if anti kill body is room for it, but I'm sure these guys have tested it quite extensively before putting in their decks. So. Ooh, Innervate Ancient of Lore. Eee, I don't know if I like that. Uh, you need to put on pressure, yeah, and you need to draw. But using a he's he's basically hoping that he'll draw into the other Ancient of Lore on time. Uh, having Lotheb in his hand, if he didn't have Lotheb, I would say Ancient of Lore is probably a no-go. I would say just Sludge Belcher. Um, but with the Lotheb, he has at least one line of defense against an earlier Alex Draza. It's really tough to say, though. Yeah, I mean, as you say, he does want to draw into more cards and doesn't have any of his combo pieces right now, so he needs to get a little bit deeper, but he is going to hope for the Sludge Voucher. And he's going to trigger the Ice Barrier with his Druid of the Flame. Pretty cool looking card, Druid of the Flame. I'm a fan of the art. I think it's nice. It's not golden. It's not golden. Golden Druid of the Flame looks really cool. Golden or GTFO. It's my motto. It's my Hearthstone motto. What do you think about the Frost Nova Doomsayer here? It's not a, a huge board to do that on, but it's certainly a sludge bunch is pretty tough to deal with otherwise. Uh, the biggest thing is it's blocking a, a, an impactful play on this turn. Um, the reason why he took so long last turn is, is he was because he was deciding on a lot of drops. Um, he was deciding on what to do, and that means that he's probably deciding on playing Sludge Belcher or playing a bigger threat. So playing Doomsayer here, base, not only is it killing the creatures that are on the board, but it's also blocking the Druid from being able to make any sort of reasonable play for that turn. So, Emperor Thorsan, turn six. Yeah. On a it pretty empty him... board as a Freeze Mage is pretty good. Because now that's he has no way to deal say. with it. What is he going to do here? That's, what, that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, one of the other big things is that it allows you to play Thorsan onto a pretty empty board. <laughs> Mosey's like, well, I'm screwed. <laughs> Oh, don't give up hope, Muzzy. He can still win. Yeah. We, but he doesn't we, have any way to kill this Thoris, and he's going to have to silence it. We've actually put the caster curse on a lot of games today. Uh, the Mildred game with Tides of Time. We said Tides was probably going to lose because he didn't draw into his Colette Oracles quick enough. But he ended up winning that one. Uh, we thought Gar was going to lose the first game, but he got really nice juggles and ended up winning that one. So... We're saying that this one looks really good for Gara. Uh, this Which means one. that Gara's going to lose, right? Which means that Gara's going to lose. Nah, we'll see. Because rank 25 casters. Sap casters. Need Twitch chat to be the casters. That's what you need. Just to, what, just to keep Twitch chat will not be happy until a tournament is casted by Twitch chat on text to speak. I would pay money to see that. <laughs> Okay, Gwyn, there you go. There's an idea. But it's cheaper than us as well. We are, you know, our writers are pretty strong as well. I get paid in packs. That's, well, you did tell me earlier we we're a free-to-play player, and I guess that counts. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a free-to-play player because every single bit of work I do, even if I do work, I, I go around and, like, mow lawns, and I say, you can pay me in Hearthstone packs. Yep. And I go around and I'll do little jobs here and there. I'll, I'll, I'll paint houses, fix roofs. And all, all I require is that you buy me packs from the Play Store. <laughs> Handyman slash Hearthstone caster. Second Doomsayer coming down for Gara, and another Ice Barrier. So the defenses are going up, and this is this is interesting. This is, again, just preventing a play. Uh, preventing Ancient of Lore from coming down, preventing anything else that might be in there, like a Scenarius. But uh, double Innervate Wild Growth is a pretty dead hand for Muzzy. Yeah, and I, I said you you need you sort of want to save the um, Ancient of Lore for the heal, but you really just can't afford to. Um, yeah, he's gonna be able to innovate swipe here to clear this. Uh... Is he gonna innovate again for hero power? He yeah. has to. <laughs> gonna gonna use double innovate. Yeah, I guess the innovate isn't as useful in this matchup, and making sure you clear the Doomsayer as well as the Amber Thorstein here to protect this relatively nice board that you have and you know there's no threat of a doomsayer anymore is just about the best use you're going to get out of innervate in this matchup so it uh, doesn't have second ancient of lore but does have lotheb as a, as his line of defense uh to buy him an extra turn if an outshot did come out 
There's so much possibility with Antonidas here. Just load your board with... Uh, load your hand with fireballs right now. It's about the only thing. Yeah, Frost Nova, possibly even Ice Lance as well. Yep, gonna see the Ice Lance. I guess on the 3-3? Three, three? Oh, I'm just gonna go face, okay. I guess that's okay. Get rid of the hero power. I mean, yep. next turn he can just, like, start shooting off fireballs like a machine gun. So... <laughs> Ugh, yeah, it's so bad playing Loth up here, but you kind of have to. You can't really yeah. like, get off that 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 many spells next turn because he's basically he's essentially going to be clearing your board and gaining more burn spells in his hand for free. So Gara, Gara was looking really confident and happy earlier, but now you can see that Loth that that pissed him off a little bit. Yeah, you can see him go. Oh no! Oh, he's got enough burn in his hand. Yeah, he's definitely got enough, though. I, uh, that Ice Lance... No, that Ice Lance was not reduced, so... Um, but he does have so much. Okay, so 12, 15, 19. Savage Roar would be 12 damage, so he has 31 damage. <laughs> That's still not enough to pop the block, though. Yeah, he doesn't even have enough to pop the block. That's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Let alone kill him. So Gara has three turns now to... Um, to kill him, and he's got well, just wait so much damage. He's got 18 damage from fireballs alone. Plus the yeah, I mean, he doesn't need it. He's gonna kill him next turn, right? Plus 28. Uh, I don't think he. I don't think he has enough mana to kill him next turn. Double frostbolt, uh, fireball. <coughs> oh yeah, yeah, he does. Mm, with the hero power, yeah, I think he has exact lethal. Uh, double frostbolt, ice lance, fireball is exactly 16 damage, I believe. Double Frostbolt, but yeah. Double Frostbolt, Fireball, Ice Lands is going to be enough for Gar to, to win out this series. A little bit of a scare there right at the end. I'm Look, find it. Do you know what? I'm not even going to call it. I'm, I'm going to wait until they see this lethal blow before I call it. Because we've made <laughs> so let's see it. All right, Gara. Uh, three plus three plus four plus six is somewhere around 25, I think. He might misclick though. He might misclick. I think he's got lethal. Totally. Uh, yeah, second yeah. fireball. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Gara does win the series three to one over Muzzy. Doesn't get the three all victory which we thought he might do, which we we definitely called him getting in that last game. But uh, pretty confident performance for Gara here, and uh, I think Gara's really got to be one of the favorites in this tournament. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, as we've seen so far. Uh, over the past couple days, the veteran player has come out on top. Uh, the only exception maybe would have been the ECOP dog game uh, because both those players are veterans and actually ECOP is one of the the original. most experienced Hearthstone players. He was one of the original Hearthstone players, Hearthstone competitive Hearthstone players back in the ESGN days and even before that in a lot of the beta yeah. tournaments. Uh, ECOP actually was one of the players who helped uh, Crip, I believe, prepare for the BlizzCon World Championship the, the very first one when he played against Artosis, so he goes way back. But yeah. um, if you look at the other ones, like Chalky, uh, Hyped, uh, the experienced player, it seems, has, has come out on top, or the experienced or more well-known player has come out on top in a lot of these matches. And Gara is also one of those original players, one of those players with the most tournament experience. So yeah, I'd definitely say he's one of the players to watch. Muzzy, though, as well, uh, maybe not now because he's out of the, the King for Charity <laughs> event, but... In other tournaments, he's, he's definitely a player to keep your eye on. Yeah, for sure. And his teammate Jab is still flying the Heartlake's flag. We're going to see him later on in the round of eight. Uh, is a possibility of an all Temple Storm final hyped in Gara in bottom <laughs> the opposite halves of the of the bracket. And it's certainly on paper they're two of the stronger, probably I would say two of the three or four strongest players in this tournament. Yeah, Papa so, Raynad uh, would be would be proud of his his little boys if he'd be if, pretty happy. if that were the case. Absolutely. Well, our next game we're going into is going to be Tice versus Show. We're going to get into that after the break. Really excited for that one. I think we'll talk a little bit about that when we come back. But uh, do remember, we're going to take a quick, uh, quick break. Now, remember, you can donate to Child's Play at the link down below. Child's Play, a charity which buys consoles and games for kids with cancer. So it would help you know, their time in hospital or their last days a little bit better. All the money you donate goes directly to Child's Play. There's nothing coming to King Gwyn or any of us. Uh, I don't get any. TJ doesn't get any sadly. Uh, all goes to Child's Play for a good cause. You can also type uh, exclamation point raffle to enter the raffle for 20 card packs. 
Uh, remember the KPL is moving to Tuesdays and Wednesdays next week, so make sure you catch that with Lothar and Noxious at 6 p.m. CET on Tuesday and Wednesday. And use the code for charity to pick yourself up a game from the Kinkoin store for 5% off. Do all of those things, and we will see you back here in 10 minutes for Tice vs. Show. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Kingdom of a Cherry Easter Edition 2015.